Hello, and welcome to Counting Crasher. Today we're going to review The Courtship Season 1, Episode 9, titled The Strongest Prevail. And the synopsis goes like this. The remaining suitors display their physical prowess and stamina at the Festival of Strength to win a private time with Miss Remy. As one suitor's intentions are questioned, Miss Remy has to decide who and what to believe. Um, as we remember last week, Mr. Holland and Mr. Mumbre were sent home, and now we have six suitors left. They're here on our screen. From left to right, we have Mr. Cones, Mr. Chapman, Mr. Bakikio, Mr. Judge, Mr. Nazir, and Mr. Hunter. So we start off with Miss Remy and her court. They're getting together, regrouping after last week's elimination. And they're focused on Mr. Chapman. Her brother talks about Mr. Chapman only being there for the chase. And her mother is worried about his nomadic lifestyle. Nicole thinks they could figure it out if he was the one for her. And her father says, ooh, in a very funny, surprised way. Meanwhile, over at the gentlemen quarters, the men discuss proposing at the end of this whole journey and to be engaged with Miss Remy. Mr. Chapman admits the idea is scary um, and he doesn't seem ready for that commitment. And to be clear, he's only telling this to the guys. He actually has not told Miss Remy this yet. Mr. Nazir, um, in his private ITM suggests that this is dishonest of Mr. Chapman, that he is not being forthright with how he feels about commitment. Next arrives the daily tea. And it says, as the dust settles, the strength of the group will once again be put to the test. Muscles will bulge and Atlas himself will brush, blush as our gentlemen will go toe to toe in the festival of strength. So the Remy's talk about the festival and who they think is going to win. And they think Mr. Judge has a good shot because of his wrestling background, which makes a lot of sense. But Miss Remy also thinks um, Mr. Hunter has a shot. Um, obviously, she has a soft space in her heart for him. He's one of her favorites. Now, the winner will get alone time with Miss Remy. So, so the men are very eager about winning. And um, right away, the men get ready for this um, festival of strength by taking their shirts off. Um, and Miss Remy appreciates this and so do I. And Mr. Hunter's abs are admired by all. Um, and <laughs> Mr. Cones is clearly intimidated, although he really shouldn't be. So they start with um, something called the Atlas Balls. And I had to look this up. Um, they're typically 22 inches in diameter and can be anywhere from 50 to 150 pounds. Um, these look like they're probably easily 150 pounds. So first up is Mr. Chapman and Mr. Bakikio. Mr. Bakikio states that Mr. Chapman is his biggest competition for Ms. Remy's heart. Um, he does this privately in his ITM. And they both are able to put the Atlas balls on the barrels in front of them, but Mr. Chapman does this first. Um, honestly, this looks very dangerous and I'm glad no one got hurt. Next is Mr. Nazir and Mr. Judge. Mr. Judge talks about how Mr. Nazir has been showing everyone up and he hopes it is his time to shine. And boy, does he, <laughs> um, Mr. Judge, lifts up the Alice ball instantly as if it was nothing. Um, it was amazing and it clearly impressed Miss Remy who gave him an enthusiastic hug. Next up is Mr. Cones and Mr. Hunter. Uh, Mrs. Remy comments that Mr. Hunter has the mental toughness. And again, as we know, Mr. Hunter is her favorite suitor. And she along with everyone else, including Mr. Cones is surprised when Mr. Cones <laughs> finishes first. Um, Mr. Cones is actually very sweet. Um, I just love him and I'm so glad he was able to win this one because I don't know, he needed it. Um, they move on to the, the next challenge which they call the Log of Endurance. Uh, Mr. Nazir and Mr. Chapman are first. 
Mr. Nazir starts to show off by doing lunges um, and everyone is impressed, including Ms. Remy who says, it's incredible and goes on to call him my hero when he wins. Um, Mr. Chapman looks frustrated and defeated, of course. And this display of peacocking by Mr. Nazir definitely influences the others um, to start doing this as well. Next up is Mr. Combs and Mr. Judge. Mr. Judge says he feels confident and starts showing off by bending the log back a few times behind his head, which is super scary. Um, this was a big mistake because he ends up losing. Um, Mr. Cohn screams, oh my God, and just leaves screaming, never judge a book by its cover. And during his ITM, he says, dad bods versus six packs. We got a win for the dad bods. Um, it was really key, actually. Next is Mr. Hunter versus Mr. Bikikio. Ms. Remy says Mr. Hunter has to redeem himself on this one. Mr. Hunter triumphs over Danny B saying he's the elite Danny. Apparently they're both named Danny. I didn't know that till this episode. Mr. Hunter shows off his win by pumping the log up and down a few times before throwing it to the ground. There's one final log off endurance around against the two longest times, Mr. Nazir versus Mr. Hunter. Mr. Hunter starts to shake and he ends up losing and Mr. Nazir wins and cheers to his success during his ITM. So this means um, Mr. Nazir won the alone time with Ms. Remy. So during their alone time, Ms. Remy says she feels that they have a connection even though it's been a short amount of time that they've known each other. She likes that he's funny, serious, and forward. He flirts with her again, saying, if you keep looking at me like that, I'll have to kiss you. They look really sweet together, actually. I believe these two are into each other, but clearly it's at a superficial level at this point. But they do have chemistry, and it's cute. If I had to guess, Mr. Nazir is a producer plant and he's just playing the role of the cocky rogue. Um, however, however, this is the first time I'm actually liking Mr. Nazir because I feel like we're seeing him on screen versus him acting on screen. It seems like the whole acting thing is being kind of pushed to the side and he's kind of being real with uh, Ms. Remy, which, which is nice, it's a nice moment. She, um, they kind of move on after the flirting and, and kissing. Um, she asks him how it's been with the other men in the house. And he tells her about Mr. Chapman, that he, that Mr. Chapman isn't interested in any sort of commitment with Miss Remy. And you can see this makes Miss, Fr Miss Remy upset. It takes her back. She isn't happy and is in fact surprised. Um, after that time together, we see Mr. Hunter seeking out Ms. Remy to talk to her. Um, and he asks why he was on the dance card in the previous night. She talks about him having a wall up. She wants him to be more comfortable around her and open up more. Um, he acknowledges that he has a hard time being vulnerable and really nothing advances between these two. They're kind of stuck at this point. Everyone goes back to their quarters. Um, and then Mr. Bukikio is invited to a Regency spa date, um, which I don't think is a thing, but anyway. He has been dying for a long time with Nicole or Miss Remy. Um, and Mr. Bukikio talks about how hard it's been for him to watch her be with other guys. This is something we've seen throughout the season. Uh, he tells her that a proposal at the end of this is quote unquote crazy. Uh, Miss Remy asks, is he going back on what he said at the masquerade ball, where he had said during the ball that at the end of this, he could propose to her. He kind of denies it and they kind of go back and forth. And then he asks her, what's the rush that he wants to spend some real time and real life time together. She appreciates his honesty, but it's not what she wants to hear. He says he's working um, for us and he isn't going to lie to her. She says the honesty may be coming from his New Yorker <laughs> roots, um, 
but she's not used to it. Personally, I think he's being the most real with her and because he has real feelings, he's struggling more than the other guys are. They decide to get into, they decide to stop talking serious talk and just to get into the tub together. There are two tubs, but they're gonna go into one. They undress, but she still keeps on her chemise, which is basically a dress. And he keeps on his pants, but he takes off his shirt. She says she feels more confident around the other guys and around him, she feels tongue tied. They tell each other that they really like each other while holding hands and it's actually really sweet. He then whispers, I do see life after this with you. And you can see this moves her, it's actually quite sweet. They kiss and at this point, I think Mr. Bukikio is definitely the front runner. I think he's been the front runner for a while. The next day, Ms. Remy seeks out Mr. Chapman to discuss his intentions. She tells him one of the other guys says Mr. Chapman is afraid of commitment and giving up his van life. He tells her, yes, it's true. Ms. Remy says her heart is in her stomach. Does he even want to be here? He says he's falling in love with her. He wants monogamy, doesn't want to slow down things with her. Ms. Remy says she feels stupid and just starts crying. He says he thinks he can be the most in love with her, but he can't give her the life that she wants. Now, at this point, tears are streaming down Ms. Remy's face. He says he wants her to be happy and he's afraid he can't give it to her. She's confused. She thinks this isn't love. How can he call it love? He starts to tear up. She thinks he's acting cowardly. She, however, says this in her ITM, not to his face. And it's breaking her heart and he doesn't know what to say. They're kind of both stuck. And you can tell it's emotionally painful for both of them. Miss Remy leaves because she just needs a minute and she can't stop crying. She's bent down in the hallway, just wailing and Nothing is resolved between them. Personally, I think Miss Remy needs to send him home. <laughs> she shouldn't let him stay at this point. I believe his feelings are sincere, but they just aren't compatible. He, cl he clearly wants to have his cake and eat it too. And he, he should walk away, but if he's not gonna, she should just send him home. Miss Remy goes back to her sister and her friend crying, telling them that Mr. Chapman wants to go home. Mr. Chapman goes back to the guys and they can see that he was crying. That's quite evident. He tells them he wishes he got to tell Miss Remy first about his hesitation instead of one of the other guys telling her. He tells the guys he feels that she's falling for him and he leaves to process his feelings alone. We're at this point left to wonder if Mr. Chapman has left permanently. We do not know. So the next day is the farewell ball. When Miss Remy comes in, she smiles when she sees that Mr. Chapman is still there. However, they both look nervous. Um, three men are called to the dance floor on the dance card. It's Mr. Cones, Mr. Hunter, and Mr. Chapman. Of course, Mr. that means Mr. Bukikio, Mr. Nazir, and Mr. Judge are safe and they go up to the balcony. So she first dances with Mr. Cones. Um, he expresses that he's confused why he's even in this position. She tells him that she feels that the relationship hasn't progressed romantically, that she wants to spend more time with him and learn more about him. He stops her and says, how about you sit back and listen, okay? <laughs> Let's just celebrate you. You are so strong, so gorgeous, so intelligent. Don't forget, if you ever need somebody to lean on, I'm just a few doors down the cottage next door. This of course makes her laugh and she thanks him for his support and she asks him to stay. Yay. Next is Mr. Hunter. And as we know, the family loves Mr. Hunter, but Miss Remy still has concerns about him being able to open up. Mr. Hunter tells her he's not afraid of commitment. He wants it with her, but Miss Remy feels like he his wall won't come down and therefore they can't get there together. He says he understands. He tells the Remy family on his way out that 
They're such an inspiring family. It's very sweet, actually. He leaves saying in his ITM that they could have been a great match, meaning him and Miss Remy, and he has no one to blame but himself. Um, he seems like a really sweet guy, really quiet, shy. And I just feel like this sort of show is really not a place he's going to thrive. So, um, but he'll be fine. He'll be fine. Last on the dance card is Mr. Chapman. Ms. Remy says she feels passion but has no control, which is scary, but also exciting. Definitely the bad boy thing going on here. She tells him that she thought he left. He tells her he wants to stay and fight for her. He wants to see this through. She tells him that he broke her heart today. He, tell, he tells her he's sorry for putting her through that. She thinks that they have what they have is real and he agrees. He wants to figure out if it's love or lust and he thinks it might be love. He promises to fight for, Ms. for it and Miss Remy asks him to stay. So only one person is sent home and that's Mr. Hunter. So at this point, we're gonna count crashes. And honestly, there was really only one <laughs> crash that kind of consumed this whole episode. So all the other crashes just seemed insignificant in comparison and not even worth bringing up. And I think we can all agree that the biggest crash of this episode was the one-on-one -on -one talk with Miss Remy and Mr. Chapman when she pulled them aside to ask him about the commitment. And just seeing Miss Remy just hunched over crying alone in the hallway, it was really heartbreaking. It was actually really hard to see. And I wish we got to see what her family and friend thought of all of this. I, we got a glimpse, but I can't imagine they didn't have a longer conversation. And they probably wanted to tell her, let him go, get rid of him tonight. But, you know, you they're smart. <laughs> and when someone's heart is in it, if you tell them something like that, they're just going to fight it. So they probably just bit their tongue and were supportive. It's the only thing you could do. Hopefully, Nicole will figure it out eventually and move on. This, for me, I, it's so clear this is just lust. It, I mean, it's not clear. We don't see everything, but it seems like it's lust and there's no real connection. It doesn't seem like love. It just feels like a physical attraction. And then another thing I'd like to do is count the crushes. Cause I mean, yes, we watch these shows for the train wrecks and the crashes, but we also watch them for the crushes and the moments that make us swoon. And there were three moments that made me swoon. Um, and we're gonna go um, from least to top, starting with number three. And the number three crushing moment is with Mr. Nazir when he has his one on one time with Miss Remy. And he says, quote, you keep looking at me like that and I'm going to have to kiss you. The way these two were looking at each other in that moment was really, really cute. Um, it felt real. It didn't feel like anyone was acting. They were clearly feeling each other. And that kiss was amazing. I loved it. Totally was crushing on this moment, crushing on him, loving it for Nicole. I'm glad she had that. Moment number two, crushing moment number two would have to go to Mr. Bakikio, that moment when he's whispering to her, I do see life after this with you during their Regency spa day in the tub. Um, this moment made me crush hard, the way these two looked at each other. It was sweet, it was tender, it felt real. And the way he chose to whisper those words made it feel real intimate and sincere. Their kiss was amazing. I love this crush moment. And the number one crush moment for me for this episode was Mr. Combs during his farewell dance. It was, oh my goodness, I definitely swooned. Um, he, he was such a star during this episode. He's definitely one of my favorites. Um, 
So he said to her, how about you sit back and listen, okay? Let's just celebrate you. You are so strong, so gorgeous, so intelligent. Don't forget if you ever need somebody to lean on, I'm just a few doors down the, ne the cottage next door. I mean, this was amazing. He made my, it made my heart melt. I love Mr. Cones. And this was the number one crush moment for me this episode. And that's it. That, that's all for uh, season one, I believe episode nine and titled The Strongest Will Prevail. And we are left with five suitors. And I can't wait till next week. Hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Thank you.